we have to talk about some of the, how bad it was, understand how good it is um, also. So uh, I want to give uh, praise to God for this, and uh, Anna is going to share her story. I'm David Durling, if anybody doesn't know me, actually, some of you may not. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Anna, Annalisa's husband, Anna, Annalisa, however you know her. Um, uh, we're married, been married for 11 years, and have a son that's 10 years old, Daniel. And I'll let uh, Anna uh, speak now. I don't like to speak in front of people, and um, so I'm going to read, and um, I, but, but this it's it's not about me it's it's about the living god god with us jesus with us very real it's about the right person being there at the right time at the right moment with the right skills and courage having the right decisions and resources to save a life it's just amazing it was the last Saturday before Christmas, December 19, 2015. On my planner, I had written down coals for last minute gifts, cookies, and tree. I've been told I was planning to cook a meal for my niece who had just had a baby that week. So we had some last minute Christmas shopping to do. David, my husband, and I decided to leave to shop in separate cars and later meet for lunch. I vaguely remember meeting David and Daniel, my son, for lunch. That was the last thing I remember until I woke up in the ICU the next week. I was driving home that afternoon, my son in the back seat when I passed out. A few cars behind us was Lisa Peterson, who's here with us. Thank you, Lisa. That was actually right behind <laughs> Lisa told me she saw my car slowly driving down a ditch. She thought it was strange, but then knew something was wrong when the car lurched forward and hit a guide wire of a telephone pole. She also saw my son looking out from the back window. She parked her car quickly and waved her arms in the middle of the busy road, on Timothy Road, stopping traffic and asking for help. An off-duty firefighter was driving home through a different route than normal and saw the car in the ditch and stopped. Here's what he wrote later. While driving down the road, I ran up on a vehicle that had gone down an embankment and had minor damage. There were people stopped all over the road and folks running down to the, to the vehicle. It was obvious that it had just happened. I decided to pull over and go see if I could be of any assistance. I got down the I got down to the car to find a woman lying up against the driver's door, unconscious. I got the woman out of the car and onto the ground. I could not find a pulse and she would not respond to anything. Myself, along with two police officers, initiated CPR until the ambulance arrived. After turning the patient over to the ER staff, I knew that things were looking a whole lot more positive than they usually do when we bring someone in like this. So I kept up with her status via care page that the family had set up a few days later. This firefighter name is Dave Novak. We met him since we went back to the hospital. He's a firefighter for the city of Monroe a city close by and he's not able to be here because he's working he's working long hours he told me later he left his truck running because he's it seemed to be a minor accident 
so he would be able to go home soon. When he was asked to come to the ER and the ambulance to help, he asked a police officer to turn his truck off and leave the keys under the mat. Mm -hmm. While the CPR was underway, Lisa Peterson took Daniel away, prayed with him, and noticed he was wearing his school t-shirt. She asked him what grade he was in, and was trying to get him away from the CPR. Later, she contacted a friend who had kids in the same school and told her the situation did not look good. Soon after that, text messages were sent to the school families asking for prayers. Sometime after the accident, Daniel, my son, went back to our car, picked up my phone. He knew the code to unlock the phone and call my husband. He said, some, he said something like this. Mom passed out and is not waking up. David, my husband, was not a frequent user of his phone, but he had it with him that day. It was turned on and charged. Thanks to God. A lady later, a lady came on the phone, asked about medical history, etc. David overheard the commotion in the background and someone saying, is she breathing? Mm. Eventually, a police officer told David to meet us at St. Mary's Hospital. The paramedics found my work badge in my purse and decided to take me to the emergency room, the very emergency department I worked, I work. David had to find his way out of the busy shopping traffic to the hospital. Daniel rode to the, house, rode to the hospital in the front seat of the police car. He was assured by the kind police officer that he was old enough to ride in the front seat. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been riding in the front seat ever, ever since. <laughs> On the way to the hospital, and a few times in the emergency room, my heart kept going into ventricular fibrillation, a life-threatening heart rhythm. The heart quivers, and is not able to pump blood properly to the rest of the body. A defibrillator is used to deliver shock to the heart, something like a jump start. On arrival to the ER, I was intubated and connected to a ventilator. Several tests were done, x-rays, CAT scan of my brain, lungs, abdomen, a heart catheterization, blood work. So it was ruled out, heart attack, stroke, clots in the lungs, aneurysm. The exact cause is still not clear. But it's clear, what is clear, is that I received excellent care by top professionals, doctors, nurses, techs, staff at St. Mary's Hospital, my co-workers. They took very good care of me. And God was with me. Dr. Felici, Dr. Priest, Chris, my manager that was here, Noe, Bill, many nurses, and the same at Emory later on. They also took care of Daniel until David arrived in the ER. David was welcomed by the charge nurse who had teary eyes and was taken to the family room while nurses and doctors were still busy working on me. David called my brother, Edward, 
his sister, Lark, and his friend, Craig Duncan. Very quickly, family, friends started coming to the ER. Daniel's teacher was there maybe within two hours of the accident. <laughs> Text messages were sent to our school community, church, and families. My mother in Brazil was notified, and a lot of prayers were lifted up. Did you see our daughter? David and others were told I was very sick. My heart was not pumping properly. Fluids started accumulating in my lungs, so it became very difficult to oxygenate my blood, even with a ventilator. My potassium was critically low, and my blood pressure was low. I was in cardiogenic shock. I was transferred to ICU that night in critical condition. Craig, our friend Craig from this church texted David a few days later and said this, Dr. Frank Felici, who intubated Anna, is a very smart man. He said he had no hope for her till you walked in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stroke her head and spoke to her. Her momentary increase in pulse said to him she was still cognitively there. Wow. That night in ICU, before hypothermia therapy was initiated, the ICU doctor wanted to see how responsive I was. Hypothermia therapy is a medical protocol used for patients who regain circulation, they have a pulse, but they're still unconscious. It brings down the core body temperature to, eight, to 89 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit um, in an effort to reduce the overall use of oxygen in special consideration of the brain. Before the nurses started cooling me down, David and my brother Edward went to see me and tried to talk to me. Edward talked to me in Portuguese. I responded with a flickering of my eyes, maybe a movement in my hand. Talking to the doctor about my responsiveness out in the hall, he told David and Edward, she's still with us. That hit both of them with the fact oh, sorry. that hit both of them with the fact that maybe I could not have been with us with them. Many, many were praying for me. Our families, friends co-workers in Athens, Atlanta, Maryland, Florida, Brazil, school families. Friends and family came to the ER to see David. A fund was started by a co-worker to help with Daniel's schooling. Daniel went home with David's sister. They bought him clothes, later bought him Christmas gifts for us. It made sure he came to the hospital every day. The next morning, the ICU doctor told David he had done everything he could do for me and wanted to transfer me to Emory Hospital in Atlanta for a special therapy called ECMO that's not available in Athens. Here is how it was written in his report. She has remained in severe pulmonary edema 
and in cardiogenic shock with severe hypotension. I have spoken to her husband, frankly, her prognosis is poor. Unknowns include her cerebral perfusion and possible brain damage. I still needed to be stabilized to be transferred by helicopter to Emory Hospital. Our church that meets here in this house was praying for me and many, many others. Just about the time I was in ICU, being prepared to be airlifted, a prayer meeting was going on at Allison Hall's house, the home of Daniel's school buddy. The trip to Emory went well. I was not placed on ECMO, after all, but I was given a medication that helps the lung heart function. In a few days, I was becoming more responsive and medically stable. My first recollection of waking up was when I realized I had a tube in my throat. It was an endotracheal tube connected to a ventilator. I remember thinking, when I'm taking care of patients in a ventilator, I usually tell them, relax and let the machine breathe for you. <laughs> so I did just that. And actually, it was a relief because it hurts so much to breathe. Mm -hmm. A well-done CPR left me with three broken ribs and the ster a broken sternum. Mm -hmm. Next to the ventilator, I saw David. It was so good to see him. He held my hand. Later, I was able to, do, to scribble with a marker on a paper, something like, what happened? Where is Daniel? And I love you. Daniel was not allowed in the ICU the first days. So a friend gave him a paper bag to write a note to, to me. The note was hanging on a board in front of my bed, and I often read it. It said, hi, Mom. I wish I could see you. Hopefully you get moved to another room in a good way. <laughs> And they were hearts all over. After a few days, I was moved to a regular cardiac unit bed. A defibrillator was placed under my skin, like a pacemaker, to treat any future ventricular fibrillation in my heart. They were talking about releasing me from the hospital in a few days. So exactly one year ago, in the evening of January 1st, I came home and I walked into my home. I had dinner with my family. I had much, much, much to be thankful for. And I'm so very blessed. A psalm says, when I look at your, heaven, at, at your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Psalms 8, 3, 4. Until today, I'm still amazed by the prayers and help 
we receive from you, our friends, church family, our families, school friends, co-workers, incredible doctors and nurses and techs from St. Mary's and Emory, rides to school for Daniel, hot meals for weeks after I came home, frozen meals in the freezer, financial gifts, care of our dogs, cards, visits, a place for David to stay a mile from Emory, a place for my sisters to stay in Atlanta. The list goes on and on. In conclusion, about a month after my release from the hospital, I had fluids build up in my lungs. This resulted in me having a surgery to get rid of all the fluids. The surgery went well, and I slowly started building up strength. Then four months after my accident, I was able to go back to my part-time job in the ER. <laughs> drive Daniel back to school and resume my daily activities. Like I said, this is not just my story. It's a story about the living God, very present, very engaged in our lives, working through people like you, my friends, family, we thank God so much for His sovereignty and goodness. I thank David, who didn't sit down and didn't sleep for the first three days of my accident, and then hardly slept the next ten days. He was with me the whole time. I thank Daniel for being brave and courageous and we thank our Lord we thank you so much for your coming today Lisa Peterson is here and um, if you'd like to sh share something or say something I'm just thankful that I'm in the right place at the right time uh -huh. you just never know when God can use you and when you should act, and I just knew at that moment I had to do something, so I was the crazy lady in the middle of Timothy Road, <laughs> <laughs> screaming and hollering and trying to get help for you, so, you know, a lot of times we see things happen and think somebody else will take care of it, you know, we need to go on about our busy day and cars were going, and I just, I, could, I don't know what it was that day, I... I saw you and I saw that sweet face in the back and I could just think I have a 12 year old son and so it just hit me really hard and I knew I had to do something. So I'm thankful that I was there. Thank you. No, I want to... Uh, I don't want to take away, honest story is the, the highlight. I, I really give thanks to God and to uh, all of you and uh, others who aren't here, the others that weren't even invited. I mean, she mentioned the policemen, um, and I, I still need to get in touch with them, but uh, I mean, the, the off-duty EMT guy said that one of the policemen was doing a great job on the CPR. He could feel her pulse while, he, while the guy was doing the CPR, you know. Um, um, there are other people. Uh, there were other people at the ICU at Emory who um, did go into the ECMO program. They've been camping out there since maybe early November, I mean, for a really long time. And um, uh, their, their, their wife, their mom did not make it. Um, and, uh, you know, they, uh, they, that program was a 50 50. You know, they told me when, when we were, they talked to me about Anna going into it, and I was. I didn't like that, but uh, I guess, I guess I, that shows me how, I mean, I, maybe I wasn't in touch with how bad it was. 50-50, <laughs> not good enough. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, um, I mean, I, we were going to do it if we needed to, but uh, she, thanks to the Lord, she didn't have to have that. Um, and uh, he was very good to us. Uh, um, 
He's good to us despite our goodness or, or, or our worthiness. Um, um, the first day, Anna, uh, this happened to, with Anna. I was at Barnes & Noble, got the call, and, um, you know, I, I can hardly even remember, uh, you know, even uttering a coherent prayer. Um, I was in agony, and um, I think God saw me... <clears throat> Well, I know he saw me in the parking lot. I know he saw me the 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 uh, the, uh, the groaning or whatever I was doing, you know, um, beat the head of beat the top of my car because I couldn't get to her because of the traffic across in my way to her. Um, but uh, you know, it, it really did work out. Of course, I mean, we give so so much thanks to God for what He's done. Um, Give thanks for Anna. Now, uh, about Anna, you know, um, someone in our neighborhood also said, um, uh, he couldn't make it, but uh, he, he told me, he, he told me he's a friend of uh, some buddies of Daniel. He's the father of some buddies of Daniel's, and he said that, yeah, if she'd gone, you know, it, the world would have been a darker place. The neighborhood would have been darker, would, would have been a darker place. <laughs> I'm not saying that God will see us through and despite that. It's easy to say that now in, in one sense because, yes, he has answered. He, he gave us what we wanted, gave me what I wanted, gave Anna her life back. And we thank you. We thank the Lord for that. We thank, thank all of you. There's much more I could say. I even thought about mentioning a scripture, but I, well, I will mention it because um, I didn't want to get preachy, I guess. But, but, <laughs> um, uh, but um, I'll just mention, you know, um, that Jesus said, you know, uh, to the to the uh, to the woman he met, who's a Samaritan, that uh, if she had asked, he would, would have given her living water. Um, we want, we want life. We want the life now. But uh, God offers a lot, the living water, the life that lasts and lasts. And um, I really give praise to him because he does that. He's given us in token of that or just out of his grace to us, I'll just say. He's given us on, uh, given us on and I give praise to him for that. Uh, thank you all for coming. sing a song. This is something Anna asked me to sing and I'm very honored that she did. Sin upon his shoulders.
shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is Good to see you all here. 